Because he's put me on the cover of his album. We're actually doing a tour in America. I'm going around doing talks in Vegas. And we go to Manhattan. They've got the map here on every corner, right? Excuse me. we got to separate you from your company, Mr. Courtney, and take you with us to meet some people. I was up for going, help me, help me. <laughs> Brendan, the geezer I live with, went, OK, Dave, off you go. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and my life was so full. I never even had enough time. That's why I'm glad I wrote a lot of books to actually tell you what I'd done yesterday. Because yeah. today was better. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you what I'd done today because the next day was even better. Yeah. And then that's truly how I lived. And I can honestly say, I have been in more countries, had more parties than anyone I actually fucking know. If I was to drop down dead today, I can't mind one bit. Yeah. Cause I didn't want to go to sleep in case I missed something. Yeah. This so. is a real honest chat. Yeah, you got me now. I I'll say this. I've been deeper and honest with you more than I have anyone else. Have you got any last words to say to Jenny? Hi guys, this week is a uh, tribute to Dave Courtney, who took his own life a few days ago. Um, it's an important one for us here. He was a, uh, he was a big friend of Eventful Lives podcast. Dave and I met 20 years ago when he invited me to Caesars nightclub in Streatham, where he had a small bunch of uh, probably about 80 people in there to showcase one of his films. And um, ever since then, we sort of uh, moved on now to 2023. Um, and then since being doing podcast in the last uh, few years, I invited Dave onto the podcast. It was a great couple of hours and some great stories in there. So really, this is just a, a moment to take for Dave. Um, we're going to put his episode out this evening. Um, he was a proper character. I really enjoyed being in his company. Uh, he would make you laugh. He'd make you feel a million dollars. He had so many stories um, and he had a big heart on him. So really, this is uh, going out to you, Dave, and uh, Jenny, and uh, Dave, your family. So I hope you all enjoy, as much as we enjoyed filming the episode with Dave last year. This is the eventful life of Mr. Dave Courtney, who certainly lived life to the max and the way he wanted to do it. I think you're born naughty. Mm. I genuinely believe it's in your in your genes, yeah? And I'm really more someone that's, I, I chase the giggle, I, I love a laugh more than the crime thing. I'm, I've never actually said on anything, I am a gangster. Mm. So where were you? Where, where, what was the first prison you went to? I went to Wormwood Scrubs. That's like a, a railway station prison. You go there first until you get allocated to what prison you go to. Yep. Yeah, you go there as um, an allocation prison. And how old were you? 21. 21. Did you feel yeah. young in there? Did you feel like a man in there? Or did you think, you know uh, what? I'm no, I felt, like, I felt like a little boy. Yeah, okay. And to be honest. Yeah. I come out, man. Yeah. How long did you do? 18 months? Yeah, yeah. 20, more, months, 20 months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all. And when you when you were in there, did you learn and get to meet a load of people? Oh, well, it, 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 it moulded me into making my mind up of what where I was going to go in my life, yeah. You know, I understood that being naughty was natural to me. I found it easy. Um, people were drawn to me. You know, I had a, with the funny bit, yeah, I had a natural um, leader element. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've, most of the people in my little firm can kick the living shit out of me. They're better shots, got yeah. more money and all that, but I'm in charge. Yeah. And you can bend an awful lot more with your tongue than you can with, with a Smith & Wesson, you understand yeah. I mean, if you're clever. Yeah. And I took that um, position on, on board very seriously, being in charge. You, know, you have to practice what you preach when yeah. you're in charge, especially as uh, there's internet out and all that now, because everyone knows exactly what you're about. So you can't preach that and then be seen doing that. Yeah. You know, you have to sacrifice an awful lot. I can't ever be stoned at me nut, buzzing on a bit of Charlie, yeah. Yeah. because I never know who's going to knock on the door and go, Dave, I need some help. Yeah. Yeah, and I can't be oh, we do it in the morning, yeah. man. Yeah. Or in a, I want to go and put an hole in him then. Yeah. I could never be like that, can you? Mm. Yeah, you, you understand what I mean? Was so, there, yeah. an, there's, an, there's an art in delegation. Did That's you the one. Did you find is, uh, 
that you uh, had that art to attain. Yeah, and I think you're born with that. Yeah. I didn't learn that. Yeah. Great. You're born with that. I can read men. I can work men. Each, yeah. If you've got an army on you, each individual man has to be dealt with in a complete different individual way, like a football team. Yeah. A good manager knows that. You know, some need shouting at, some yeah. need coaxing, some need a little cuddle. That's why Harry, Harry Redknapp's so good. Yeah, he's a star. He's a star. He's a star Thank God he weren't a policeman. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank God he was He, he would have got everyone. He would have got absolutely everyone on Harry, mate. What was your movement? Were you going, I'm going to go clean, or were you like, right, I'm out? No, no, no. I didn't I'm actually realise at the time I was going to be a full-on criminal. Yeah. I then came out with a million flat-nosed, bald-headed geezers around me that were mine, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and took on a security company. Okay. And I had the biggest security company, I think, in Great Britain at the time. Yeah, I'd done all the clubs men? in London. Um, over a thousand odd. You had a thousand men on the books. Yeah. What's um, this? Must, this must be like mid-80s, isn't mid-80s, it? Mid-80s, yeah. Over a thousand men. And they weren't, they weren't, they weren't security as we know them now. They were bouncers back in they the day. They were bouncers, yeah. Please, li- listen. Listen, Different ball game. All, isn't it? all respect to every doorman yeah. that, 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 that puts the badge on today, right? Yeah. But you cannot yeah. put yourself in the same bracket yeah. as, as doorman of then. Agree. Yeah, well, there was just four people working on the hippodrome. Yeah, you know, two thousand people. Yeah, right. You had two doorman outside. One doorman inside with his thousand downstairs, and yeah. one doorman upstairs with his thousand. Yeah. And there was football violence yeah. out at the time. That's right. You know, there was two, two, three hundred. West Ham, West Chelsea Ham, fans come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two, three hundred. Newcastle fans yeah. not going back that night. Two, three hundred. Liverpool yeah. fans, two, three hundred. You know, and when you was in trouble, you didn't have a walkie talkie to go, trouble exit number four, need a little bit of assistance, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, or pass the baton and all yeah. that. You went, help me yeah. and run in and done your bit. Yeah. So what, so your, your main thing was having a thousand men, putting a thousand men yeah. in different clubs and you taking your cut yeah, of yeah. what they're getting paid. But what, no, what actually happened here is yeah. this. They're only dormant in the night time. Yeah. In the daytime, they're unemployed. So I was a job centre for a thousand big, tasty bastards. Yeah. Now, if you wanted your next door neighbour, shut up, your squatters thrown out, your car repossessed, your daughter's boyfriend give a clump, rent a clump, you wanted anything rent like that. Clump. Yeah, well, you wanted anything <laughs> like that done. Yeah. The doormen's the one to ask. Yeah. Because yeah, you, you they're not doing anything in the week. Cause cause they're they're right, right. Weekend, so yeah. I became a job centre yeah. for naughty men, hence... The firm, yeah. Courtney's, fir- Courtney's firm, yeah. yeah? And without, and, and I'm in charge of it. And I had Indians, Pakistanis, Protestants, Catholics, Blacks, White, Polish, Russian. I had the old lot on my, on my little thing. There was no um, prejudice against yeah. anyone. You was on my little firm, you're on my little firm. Yeah. You know I mean, old, young, northern, whatever. So I had them up and down the country. And this is all before. So your weapon of choice was the mobile phone. Absolutely. Rather than a shooter or anything else. Oh, you yeah. Pick, you beat it on the head. Yeah. If I say anything cockier than this, I doubt it. But if there was any problem I have or had in my life, yeah. right, if you let me get my mobile phone, I promise you, yeah. right, I'll fuck you. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. Wherever it is, whoever it is, whatever, if you let me get to that, right, the days of the best fighter is the one in charge. That's a bit... Conan the Barbarian, yeah, right, yeah. It's, 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 it's what you know and yeah. who you know yeah. and where you can get it and how quick you, it's all on the phone. Yeah. Do you think by, by chatting, having your chat, you can diffuse the moment as well? Oh, uh, uh, 100%. Yeah. Listen, the geezer jumped out of me once at the, at, at the Hippodrome where I'd thrown him out or helped to throw him out through the side exit. He'd actually run out to the car, done a pipe, and then come running around to the front with a, with an handgun and go, ah, screaming and shouting. And they've just gone... Courtney down to the uh, to the <laughs> to the man didn't tell me what it was yeah. didn't tell me what it yeah. was bless their little hearts yeah. and I've gone running into the foyer and he's there standing there like that and you can tell by someone's eyes whether you're in trouble or not yeah, okay forget the size yeah and you're in, where's all your mates now now what are you gonna do now what are you gonna do and he's just about to pull the trigger and I'm thinking I can't even hide anywhere yeah, I can't awesome. hide I'm too close and so I quickly just turned me back I went get famous for shooting me in the back. Shoot me in the back, and I'm walking like John Cleese, big steps, yeah, that, that way. <laughs> and I get famous to shoot me in the back, and you've only got to drop a little seed in there, and he's going, turn around, turn around. I went, no, shoot me in the back, shoot me in the back, and I'm walking double fast, you know. <laughs> got around the corner. <laughs> Needed a new pair of white front you know what I mean? <laughs> What were you doing for your pound note to earn such big money back then? 
Um, I, 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 I was a bit of a naughty boy around that, on the pavement, yeah. What do you mean by uh, that? Yeah, you know, I've done a few post offices, a few okay. petting offices, and, yeah. and all that, you know. Robbing uh, banks, robbing post offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so many banks, but post offices and betting offices are a lot easier. You know what I mean? A betting office at half past three in the afternoon on Grand National Day, you yeah. can get more out of that <laughs> than you can with a bank. I mean, how would you go in? How would you go in? Go in there. Just go. Right, well, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm teeing this up. What did you fancy in the morning, or did you gear it no, up? No, so no. I normally, morning? normally, I, I, I'm cleverer than that. Mm. I'm a lot cleverer than that. I'll actually have someone inside waiting for me, knowing I'd be in at that time. They'd have it all wrapped up, waiting for me. I'd walk in like that. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. I've gone in to do it one day, not realising how many fucking people were in there betting office, yeah. not realising at all. So as I've kicked the door down, right, pulled up outside, as I've kicked the door down, it's hit someone and shut in my face. I'm standing in the middle of the road with the thing and a belly on, like, wow. I can't. So I've had to open the door again and they've all got their back to me looking at the telly going, ah, 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 ah. So I'm going, everywhere, but no one can hear a fucking word I'm saying. They're not even looking at me. It was the first time I had ever seen people buying bottles of water. Yeah. Five quid a It was pop. the first yeah. time I had ever yeah. seen. Because yeah. I come from an era where everyone was drinking light and bitters. You yeah. know, if you walked up to the counter and went, uh, three bottles of water, two lemon juices, a rye bean and an orange juice, you'd get punched in the fucking head <laughs> just for actually saying it. You know what I mean? Like, and then can I have ice with that? Yeah. You know, like, and I, I'd never seen... Four deep at the bar, people buying water, yeah. tipping one bottle over their head and drinking the other bottle. Yeah. And I couldn't get yeah. my head around it. You know what I mean? Mm. I couldn't. Um, Sweat dripping from the ceilings, wasn't of it? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. literally dripping from the ceilings. And yeah. I didn't know. Listen, I actually sprayed my ceilings black. And then with a paintball gun, which had silver paint, I'd done stars on it, which I thought looked really good yeah. in the day. <laughs> it looked fantastic when I'd done it until we get. Six, seven hundred people in there all night sweating. Yeah. And then it was all black sweat That's coming, right. dropping, <laughs> dropping onto you. You know what I mean? We didn't have a, we didn't have, um, no way of putting toilets. And in the railway arch, you're not allowed to bang a, na- a, a, a put a nail in the wall down there. You're not mm. by law. But we got a digger in, or that gentleman over there got a digger in. That's my Brendan, by the way, sitting in the studio. <laughs> um, that's, that's half of me. Him. Yeah. He's been with me 30 years, living with me. Yeah, he's had lasted three wives. It's a fucking nuisance. It's not- <laughs> but, big up, Brendan. Yeah, big up, yeah, yeah big up, Brendan. <laughs> but he got digger in, and we just dug the biggest hole in the middle of the nightclub you ever see. So broke into a main sewer and put a little tube down to it, So and then, then put the toilets in. But every time it rained, all the sewer came up oh, and no. bounced, bounced. If you couldn't dance, you stood on the manhole and that just all <laughs> bubbled it with like the vibrations made you look like the, be- the best movie <laughs> in the world. But it ended up with shit coming out of the fucking thing all over the floor, but no one knew it was so black. And it was black raindrops falling on you from the roof. You understand what I mean? The paint was all yeah, dripping yeah. off the roof. Where was I? What was I talking ministry. about? Ministry. Let's talk ministry. Let's talk gas club we used to go. I used yeah, to go to the gas, gas club. club. I used to go to the yacht. I used to go to ministry. Back in different, the day. Were you, running, were you running those? The dormant. The doors, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What yeah. was the best club for you in London at the time? Um, I think the gas at the time was, was quality, was, was stunning. It? Or the arches. Yeah. The arches in just off of um, um, Tower Bridge. Mm. Yeah, the arches mm. was absolutely at this well Sunday mm. afternoon. And then it went from nightclubs where it was shutting at, um, yeah, yeah. Nightclubs were shutting at um, three o'clock normally. Yeah. But a man called Timmy Ramjam, who I went, funny enough, last night to go and see UV40 with, yeah. which was absolutely yeah, nuts, also, by the way. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, in uh, Chingford. Okay. Big open air thing. Absolutely awesome. superb. Yeah, yeah, absolutely superb. Yeah. I was sweating away. I yeah. thought I was about 18. I was <laughs> about older. And everyone knew all the words. You could you could have been a shit scene. We wouldn't have made Because everyone was on there going, red, red. I thought I could sing when I was younger. I weren't a little bit. But now you sound like a football league yeah, as you sing now. <laughs> red, red, wide. You know what I mean? <laughs> a couple of thousand of you were doing that. You actually go, wide. You know, it's mental. But look, the Ministry of Sound, what a fantastic yeah. place that was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they put no tables and chairs in there so you couldn't sit down, kept you standing in a queue. Yeah. So you had to bring a coat and then charge you £2.50 to hang your coat yeah, up. So you got two two thousand two extra £2.50s yeah. every yeah. day. You know, and they sold you an ice pole for a pound. Yeah. Because, you know, and they bought them four for a penny, yeah. you know, un, uh, unfrozen. You yeah. know, what we did when I, when I bought Arches, I bought... A quarter, you buy them in a quarter of a ton of empty Evian bottles. Yeah. 
right? And I just filled them up with water. I'm sorry, but you're just filling it up with water and putting the top bottle, sticking it in the fridge. And when they're coming up and buying all this water yeah. off you, yeah. right, you took the top off for them. So, because you didn't want all the bottle tops on the dance floor, because yeah. that was the thing to dance in, wasn't yeah. it? Right? Yeah. So, you took the tops off and pour them. So, every bottle of water I was filling up was like doing an armed robbery. I was going, five pounds. Five pounds. Yeah. Five, yeah. Five, <laughs> five, <laughs> five pounds. I mean, yeah. Five for a man. Yeah, five five for a man. Know, bottles <laughs> of it, and they're buying it and chipping it over their head anyway. And I'm thinking, it comes out the fucking yeah. tap. It comes yeah, out the tap. funny when you go to the toilet, though, you wouldn't be cold water. They'd just leave hot water so you couldn't go and refill. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were trying to find a bit of toilet paper, like, yeah. especially in the arches. An ashtray, that was really funny to find. Yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, cocaine is the only drug in the world, the most expensive one that you choose before you buy it to buy the most expensive drug in the world and give half of it away <laughs> right you actually buy a gram and before you have it you actually look for someone to go in the toilet with and go here oi, online so if you want a gram of charlie actually because you're 100 quid then yeah, yeah. yeah it's mostly 100 pound a gram now yeah. decent yeah. but it costs you 100 quid because you give half a gram away you have a line oh do you want a line do you want yeah. a you don't do that with any other drug yeah you don't go into a pub and go get a pint of lager. Do you want to open that? Or go shopping and go 50 quid. Do you want to take that home yet? Or, you know, with a, a trip or anything. You, you, but they see the most expensive drug in the world and you look for someone to give it away to. Yeah. Right, and it, that is. Mm. Now, where was I going? So, no, that? I want to know that sort of journey. You're a postman. You're yeah, so what happens a is, is you go to a club, you're spending your 50 quid on, on, on a. Not out. On a gram of Charlie, yeah. and then you realise that if I bought an eight for something like that, I could have three or four grams of Charlie out of it, yeah. sell them three, and get this one for nothing, because yeah. I'm having to buy two here. Yeah. I'm having to buy two. I'm giving half of it away. I don't know why. Everyone else is, but I'm having to buy two grams of Charlie. So once you've then, just once in your life gone, I've got some Charlie here for sale. Mm. Do you want a gram? Mm. Right? People get to know. So the very next week, everyone that you sold it to is coming up going, talk you got any Charlie? Yeah. Or anyone you sold it to is being asked, they go, go and talk to him. And you realise it, that I could have sold 10 or 15 tonight. Yeah. So you'll get 10 or 15, you're still being a postman. Yeah. right? And once you've started sending it to loads of people, you have a million people every every night you want to go out Asking you for a gram shot, you could sell fucking 30 grams if you wanted to. Just standing under the stairs selling this has made you the most popular bloke in the club, yeah. right? You're getting birds want to fuck you. You're getting invited to every single party. I'm earning four times my weekly wages on Saturday night. I don't want to go and work no more. Yeah. And I can actually go to more clubs in a the week then and earn vultures. You don't even realise you're turning into a professional criminal mm. by leaving your day job. Mm. Right, you just drifted into that. Right, you yeah. haven't actually realised that when the old bill do check your phone, and you've got scales in your house, and the bags, and a list, and a and the messages on your phone, you don't actually realise that until you actually get pulled. Yeah, and when you get pulled, you're fucked. You're looking at eight fucking year. Is it eight? Is it well, don't know. Well, you can, roughly, yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. you've got two or three answers in you. Yeah. And, you know, and what they will do is go, right, well, you either tell me everything you know about where you get it from, who you sell it to, and, all that, and I'll let you go. Right? Or you're getting eight year as from tonight, mate. Yeah. Hence, everyone will turn into a class. Yeah. They'll all pretend that, that no, that never happened to me. I've done the eight year. Yeah. Right? They turn. Yeah. And that's and, when it gets and naughty. And that's when it gets naughty yeah. and it happens. Now, they know that. The police know that. They'll actually nick you at your house in front of your missus and go, right, you're getting eight years now. You lose your job, your pension, the mortgage for this house. You think, what, you, or do you want to tell me where you get it from? Yeah. Or just give me one a week. Give me one person a week or we'll put you in eight years. The, the wife will go do it. Yeah. All right? And then the whole world that you're involved in is infested with informants yeah. so the only way you can avoid that is don't do it yeah me yeah i don't do that yeah and haven't done well 20 odd years because i won't get involved in anything yeah. anyone can lolly me up for because i know they're out there i've been accused of it myself mm. yeah i've got arrested for um working with a bent copper anyone that was a criminal in my day you had a bent copper yeah yeah, and I'm afraid that's that's true. And when he got caught, he went, "No, I'm not giving Dave any information." Um, he, so he got what did he get? He, caught he for? got caught for setting up some bird of cocaine, right. so that an husband would win a custody battle. Right, right. And when they went, um, 
and they caught him putting the cocaine in and all that. And they went, and then he went round and raided and found the cocaine. And then while all that was going on, the husband won the custody battle. That was the plan. But they was waiting for him to do it, filmed him putting the drugs in and all that. And he went, and so they said to him, why did you raid that house? He went, my informant told me. So I said, well, who's your informant? So he didn't have one, did he? Because it was, yeah. he was doing it as a job. Yeah. So he's come round to me and went, do you mind if, I, I don't know this is all real. He just went, I've got caught talking to someone. I've just got caught talking to you. So Ben Copper, who you were bunging, got, yeah, caught, yeah, got yeah. caught up in he, this. Listen, he, 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 yeah, he, he, he got the bulletproof vest for Roy Shaw. He's got Joe Pyle out of trouble. He's got Freddie Foreman out of trouble. They all know him. He's, yeah. a, he's a friend of mine. But I got a tape recorder in him and filmed it and made a thing of him going, it's absolutely nothing to do with Dave Courtney. I just need an excuse to go why he's, I mean, his company. That's what he told me. Okay. That's what he told me, but he was already under observation. So you got caught up in this or something? It's nothing I've to got, do with you. Fuck all do with me. Nothing. And when he got caught, he went, uh, look, there's all pictures of you with Dave Courtney or Ben Copper. And he went, no, no, he's working for me. <laughs> right, so for eight months before we went to the old Bailey, the press jumped on that. What year were we talking here, Dave? I don't know, 2000? 99, yeah. 99. They jumped on that because at the time I was running for Lord Mayor, I was, you know, Mr. What, Popular. Lord Mayor of London? Yeah. Were you going for Lord Yeah, Mayor? yeah, I was running for Lord Mayor of London. <laughs> Dave, yeah. I'll hold me that on that Lord Mayor of London. I'll go back, back to that. To that. But, but <laughs> what they did is for eight months, he was going, not guilty, not guilty, yeah. I'm paying Dave. But I had video proof and I'd taped him, I'd bugged myself and taped him with everything he said. Yeah. The police had that. When they arrested me, I went, no, 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 I'm not working with him, look, he's working with me, he yeah. are. I can't get arrested. So you for, gave him the tape. Okay, look at but the fact, yeah, but for eight months they he went not guilty, and on the day the court started, he went guilty. So he never had to go to court. But they had eight months to go. Court he might be a grass. Court he might be a grass, and that knocked my popularity oh, no. on the edge. There was no more filming for Dave. No more magazine work. No more running for Lord Mayor because of him. No, yeah, because of him. How I met Jennifer. Yeah. Let me get back to that. Yeah, I yeah. employed this little woman. Yeah, right in in the yacht in the. Um, Fitness centre. Yeah. I've finished the club at three o'clock, so I'm nicely buzzing along. And I come home, and in my club on the stage was the owniest, <laughs> I promise you, the owniest, sexiest pair of twins you had ever seen. Yeah. Black. But because, you know, there is a thing with twins, you know, I've got this little connection. Yeah. They're little sexy dancers as well. Yeah. Their dancing is. You know how they can do the things together where they mm. know who's, who's going to be what. It yeah. was just absolutely spellbinding, right? And I said to her, "Look, on the first day I met her, I, was like, I don't know if you're married. You can." I said, "I want you." She went, "Well, I won't tell you what we said about that." But I said, "I want you." I said, "No, no." I said, "I want to keep you. I want you." I, I, I fell in love with it, Mills and Boone. I know that's really stupid, and instantly, yeah, in, on on the spot, yeah. yeah which was a which was a very Different thing for a London skinhead white yeah. to do in those years. In the them years, girl, yeah. to go, I'm now going out of a blackbird. Yeah. That was quite pioneering yeah. at the time, right? I mm. promise you that. Mm. You know, I'm mm. not trying to do it for a flag no, waving, blah, blah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But it weren't like that. You yeah. know what I mean? There was, you know, it, it was quite and you pioneering. Didn't care. Yeah, no, well, I, I didn't give a monkey. Yeah. She, she turned into 51% of Dave Courtney, went to prison for me, was with me with all of my. Things would go guilty if it was if it meant me not going. You know, she was. You know, she, her words to me was, "Listen, I know what you're doing. I'm plasticine for you. Build me into whatever you want. I'll be that." Right? Wow. wow! 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 And I built that. You know, that's my biggest and only regret. Um, how in long life. You, how long were you ever for? Twenty odd years. Why did you split up? Um, I was a bit too handy with me hand one day, and gave her a slap around the chops. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah, of course you did. Yeah, yeah. but like, uh, my biggest and what's your name? Regret. We're still beautiful friends now. We've got babies together. I've got my own kids with her and all that, you know. But at the time, um, I made a mistake. Yeah, mm. I pay for every day. Yeah, I pay for every day. Do you wish you were still with her now? <laughs> Don't make me say that in the air. How did she? Uh, when did she go to Nick for you? Took her guilty. Um, I got, I got well, never got caught with anything in my house. She was mine. You know, and she was the oniest person I'd ever met. You know, she liked ladies too. We were running swingers clubs. You know what I mean? She, <laughs> she, uh, her, her rules were. How old was she when you met her? When you uh, nineteen? How old, you, how old are you? Nineteen. I was roughly 
29. Okay. Uh, and her rules were, this is stop it because I was going to start crying. Her rules were this. You can fuck anything you want. You should have a nice week if you want. But bring it home and we'll both do it. Right? I'm happy with that. Right? I'm happy with that. But don't ever let me find out, I love you because you're brain, yeah. that I've offered you two for nothing, that you sneaked off on your own, yeah. went to an hotel, bought a gram of Charlie, bought the champagne and had, and made me a laughing stock in front of some fucking dopey bird yeah. on your own yeah. when you could have come home and done it for fuck all. Yeah. Don't ever let me find that one out. Yeah. Yeah? What did silly bollocks do? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I fucked that up and all, yeah, didn't I? You yeah, understand cool. me? Of course I did. Shut what was up. Going, what was going through your mind thinking, hold on, I've got... I had a- years, I had 20 odd years of that. I built a nightclub in my back garden. I had amples of money. We was running around the world. We was touring America on tour. We was doing Europe. I was living in Tenerife half the time. We, Just you know, living the life. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was mental. It was, it, she was, you know, it was and mental. It didn't, it didn't bother you. You actually think, hold on a minute. I've got a missus who's giving me everything laid on a plate. Yeah, I'm going to go and fucking yeah. ruin it now. Yeah, cool. And I've just ruined that whole interview by whatever you put on me beforehand. I've made myself look dickhead. No, not at all. This is honest. I'm being Dave. honest. This is yeah. honest, Dave. This yeah, is I'm, proper honest, mate. That's that's um that's my only biggest and biggest regret. regret. And do you think that cocaine and champagne mixed was a big instigator for you going off and doing all that? Um, it didn't help. Mm. You know what I mean? Being off your trolley and birds throwing themselves at you and. Yeah. Having free, you know, everyone wanted. I was getting paid five hundred quid to go to a club, yeah. just to actually go in there and have a drink with a few of me pals. I was giving me a monkey, yeah. so it looked like it was theirs, or giving me hotel suites and giving me rental Rolls Royces or yeah. villas to go on holiday to. To mm. you know, what I mean, I had Brad Pitt stay at my house when they filmed Snatch. Um, Vinnie Jones played me in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. He actually played me, yeah. though, in my stories. It was my thing. You know, Jay-Z, the cover of his first album, um, Blueprint, yeah. that's my photo. Yeah. They took a picture of me doing a, a speech at the Oxford Union, and it was an aerial shot, where, and he thought that was really funny. It was in a book called The Firm, which went big in America, yeah. and he thought that was really funny, a convicted felon speaking, becoming a don at the Oxford Union, teaching future parliament how to behave. He yeah. thought that was really funny. So he'd done a replica of the same photograph and put himself there and called it Blueprint, a black guy instead of a white guy. Yeah. And um, it, like, like denied it, paid paid the money for it to be done and denied it. But it's all coming out now. And uh, Fat Man Scoop is now doing the documentary about that. Yeah, Fat Man Scoop played at my festival, Bournemouth Sevens. Oh, good, isn't Very he? Good. Ain't he oh, good? <laughs> he had the crowd eating out of his hands. <laughs> a professional, um, yeah, mate. A professional entertainer. Yeah. Let's Pretty. go back to that '95 when you got the deal to put on Ronnie Cray's security for his funeral. How yeah. did that come about? Well, it came about that I'd actually met Ronnie and Reggie Cray quite a lot then. I'd become their arms and legs while I was in prison. I didn't know them beforehand. I'm only 63. Yeah, but I met them when I was in there and um, when they were in there. And I'd done a lot of things. I mean, in the world that I was in then, I didn't think it was going to go into the entertainment world, yeah, at all, or the, soup, the, the celebrity world. Yeah, I didn't realise that. I thought it was just a naughty boy world mm. I was destined for, and I was doing very well at that. Mm. And being associated with the Cray Twins was Massive. an asset. Yeah, absolutely. An asset yeah. for me. And I was down visiting them all the time, and I, um, Charlie Cray come and stayed at my house, lived at my house for six months. I was actually a witness. I was a character reference in Charlie Cray's last court case. And uh, the two identical twins that I was... Jennifer was, was my yeah. wife was one of them yeah. done a record called They Took the Rap it was a rapping record That's and right. it was about the twins yeah. and so I went up to meet them we become good friends I've done all sorts of things for them as you can imagine yeah. and um, when Ronnie died the funeral parlour got threatening phone calls saying you know not everyone's a crater fan yeah. um, we're going to set light to the gap tonight so they've got in touch with Reggie Cray at the yeah. prison and gone what are we going to do about that? They will had him a phone call late at night, so he's rung me and went, Dave, I need some security to mm-hmm. sleep in the funeral parlour at night. Well, the thing, well, to be perfectly, perfectly yeah. honest with you, it was a lot easier for me to find 150, 60 blokes on the day to do the security than there. it was to find four blokes to sleep in there with me all night. Yeah. It was scary. Yeah. You know, the ghosts, are, the ghosts are scary anyway with the ghost yeah. of Ronnie Cray. Well, man. Yeah. 
But I was in there. So you were at peak then. What age were you when you got asked to do this? With bring 150 men from all around the UK. Uh, that's an overall experience for me. I, I can't remember at what age I was then. Check the check the um, I, I, late twenties, thirties, thirty odd. Yeah, 30, yeah. Okay. I was I was peaking at the time. Yeah, I was okay. in my peak. And um, I then called down a, a group of men that were 150 people, which I thought were the tasted people I know. They were the Mr. Dave Courtney, they were the Mr. Manchester, Mr. Liverpool, Mr. Glasgow, Mr. Brighton, Mr. Newcastle, Mr. Yeah. Gravesend, you know, yeah. everyone that came down had their own criminal CV, yeah. right? And because three quarters of a million people turned up at Ronnie Craig's funeral, yeah. um, they all dropped their guard for the day because a lot of these people didn't get they're on. Not, they're yeah. all they're all different firms yeah. from different parts of the country with different. But they, and you know, the last time he shot him, he shot his. Last time he saw him, he shot his brother. And all sorts of things. But on that one day, because I was burying the monarch of the British underworld, yeah. yeah um, it was a very scary time for the police. And because I'm a silly, mouthy bastard, that you know when they say you can cut your tongue out? What, a I certain had, time? Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah, I yeah. had meetings with me, Charlie Cray, um, Sir Paul Condon and all that, all yeah. in the room, to, talking about security. And I was saying, we do this, we do that. And I went, look, I said, there's going to be that many people here. Um, they're not policemen fans, you know, they're gangsters, would be gangsters, have been gangsters, want to be gangsters, gangster fans, yeah. you know, they're not. And if the, the church only holds 250 people, mm. do you know to let in and who not to? Mm. Do you know to let in and come in and kiss him on his body and not to in, in the funeral pile? Do you know to come in and stand around the hole at the yeah. funeral or way outside the gate? Yeah. If you don't know and you're saying no to the wrong people, yeah. it's going to kick yeah. off, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So they went, right, you can do all that. You can do all that. Who are you saying this to, Reggie? No, 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 I'm saying to, 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 to condom. Yeah, okay. Right? So I'm saying all that. He said, but the one thing we have got, Mr. Courtney, that your little band of men haven't got, he said, not everyone is a Cray Twin fan and there might be an assassination attempt. All right? They haven't been able to do it for the last 30 or years because they've been locked up, but they're now going 20 miles or 15 mile an hour. He's hopping out the car at the funeral parlor, hopping yeah. out the car at the church, hopping out the car at the cemetery, and there might be an assassination attempt. And the one thing we've got that you haven't got, only because I was being cocky, he yeah. went, is a firearms unit. And there I should oh. have shut my mouth. Uh, oh. But what I said was, oh, the one thing you've got that we haven't got is a certificate. I said, well, we've got a fucking gun, you know. And I'm saying this to the chief of police, and from that second on, yeah. from that second on, yeah. um, it went, shut that man down. There's no one in England's allowed to have his own private army, especially telling me that some of them are going to be armed. Oh. Right, uh, you know, I want no more. Do they went to the nightclubs that I was working at within that very week. Yeah, didn't hide it at all. Went straight up to the manager. Went, look, you got Courtney Security working here. Yeah, by next week, you won't have a license for a fucking television. Yeah. so get rid of it. They went to the magazines that I was working for, TV stations that I was working for. The I was, I was getting all my books published by Virgin Books. I went to them <laughs> and just shut me down. I paid very dearly for that comment. Yeah. I didn't realise it at the time. I now know what it was, but it all started getting dark yeah. and changing for me. So I then thought, and after that, after that funeral, the press grabbed hold of me and turned me into celebrity gangster. Well, that really weren't what I was saying I was. I yeah. was, I actually wasn't that. The people I was working with and for, the Craterans, they might have been celebrity gangsters. I'm actually just running dormant, mate. Yeah. And once you're in charge, the things that they do, you get the blame and yeah. the credit for because I'm in charge. Yeah, the leader. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's Martha, you know, and it blew me into a little, I'm not saying I'm white and white, mm. I ain't saying that at all. Mm. Yeah, I've done my fair share mm. of shooting people back mm. too. And, but it blew me in, out of proportion on how naughty I was, you know, heir to the throne yeah. and all of that bollocks. So I quickly, no one in the crime world, crime's only – Glamorous on the big screen and books. Not yeah. in real life. It yeah. ends up shitty yeah. nine times out of ten, yeah? Prison sentence wrapped around you or belly buttons you didn't want. Yeah. You know, that's how it normally mm. ends up. And so very quickly, now the world is all Dave Courtney'd up on um, Heir to the Throne, Celebrity Gangster. Yeah. I quickly had to do something that was just as public to say I wasn't that. Yeah. Hold on. So I wrote a book called Stop the Ride, I Want to Get Off. Yeah. Yeah. 
which which was funny. The answer, yeah. Well, yeah. I, hope, I hope it was yeah. funny. It was meant to be funny, mm. and it was meant to be telling you, "Oi, I ain't that." Yeah. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm more into the giggle, and it was supposed to be. I, I like to be funny. Yeah. Yeah, and, but I was blown into that proportion, and once you become famous for being naughty, the less naughty you can actually be. Yeah, once course. everyone in the sure. world knew what I looked like, yeah. I couldn't even get out of my car and go yeah. to the geezer behind because every geezer in the world would go, it's Dave Courtney, yeah. I've seen him on the telly. Yeah. My job was debt collecting, kicking someone's door in, running into their house, running around the front rooms and making his money back. Yeah. No, no, I can't do it because they will go, it's Dave Courtney. Mm. I'm hungry. Yeah. So the more famous I got for being naughty, the less naughty I could be. I actually yeah. could be. So yeah. I ended up half being a fake. By the time everyone in the world knows they're currently gangster, I am not a gangster. Yeah. So I then, then twitched it around to the being on the films, doing the thing, so you, get a load of yeah. me, which didn't didn't go down well with everyone because I, I was. Um, did you enjoy that part? Of course I did. Shut yeah. up. Yeah, of course. Right. I'm, I'm a best. I'm a better entertainer than I ever was gangster. Yeah. But I'm afraid I've come from a world that we're going to collar up, meeting down little alleys. Yeah. No pictures, no comic, no saying yeah. that. And I'm going, da da, yeah. here I am, writing books about it, yeah. get a load of me, yeah. you know. And at, at the time, it was a little bit hard for some of them to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. Not the main players. So I didn't give a monkeys because all the others, I was dragging them up with me. I was getting Reggie Cray, his own column in the front magazine. I was getting Charlie Bronson. Yeah. Well, I still speak to on a weekly basis. Yeah. Dave, tell me about why you went to court dressed as a jester, and when did you bang out that copper? Um, well, the, the, I have to go back a little bit before I get to that, right? Because I was aware that they had the tapes when I got arrested that I wasn't an informant, yeah. and they knew right on the very first day I was arrested, I gave them the tapes, yeah. the video of what, what our relationship was, and by the way that they was writing about it and, and reporting it in the paper and making it look like I might be an informant, I understood uh, very early on what they was actually trying to do for it. And I did say in my interview on tape that um, do not put me in the dock with this man yeah. or put me within arm's reach of him because for saying what he's saying about me, if it be believed, I would be shot. So I will punch him in the fucking mouth mm. if you put me anywhere near him. Mm. And they said, it was your co-defendant. I said, right, but I want it written down. I told that if you put me anywhere near him, um, I'll bang him. Well, they did believe that because it went to court two or three times before it was going to the old Bailey. And they put him on in the morning with the other co-defendant and me on in the afternoon, right? Um, because they knew that I was actually going to bang him. And then they started going, well, everyone's calling you, you might be a glass. Do you want to leave the court? with a back entrance, with a bag over your head in case someone takes a shot at you. And I thought, you're doing it on yeah. purpose to make Take me, me look yeah. bad, right? Yeah. So I was so fuming with what they were doing, and I knew that he had to go guilty. Yeah. I was, I knew he had to go guilty yeah. because they had the tapes. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just sitting there, and so for the whole eight months, I was screwing with yeah. what they were doing, and it was making some people go, well, the jury's out on court. You know, yeah. you know and I was like, wow, man, yeah. wow. And when they said about me putting that bag over my head and going out the back door, I thought, right, I'll make a, such a statement <laughs> of going in the front door. Yeah. But I thought I'd go in there 40 handed, dressed as a court jester, and because I knew I weren't going to bump into him. But as I walked into the court, he had just got out of the dock and was walking past. And as he's walking past me, I am within punching distance. Please believe me, I'm a very calculated man in my head when it yeah. comes down to. Yeah dishing out a bit of violence or risking getting in trouble. Yeah. And as soon as he walked past me, I thought, I'm never going to get another chance of this. If I just if I beat him up, I'll get in trouble. But one smack in the mouth, I can get away with Because yeah. it's their fault. Yeah. They should have kept him away from me like they know they are supposed to. They've kept him in separate court cases up right up till now. And as we come level, I put one on his chops, a beautiful shot, mm. banged him out onto the floor, grabbed by the police and dragged off. My wife then came in and see me being dragged off and him on the floor. What was even more beautiful is as they come and picked him up, one got his arm, he's facing that way, and the other one got his arm and he's facing and they're lifting him up to put him on a chair, facing 
the opposite way. And my missus come running up to him like that and he can see her and he's trying to get out of the way and she's gone, <laughs> the proper little combination <laughs> smacked him up. So by the time they sit him on the chair, all the damage done to him looks like <laughs> i just done that with a whack. Yeah. But they couldn't nick me for that because I have said, I'm going to do it. You have believed me and kept him separate from me for me. So that is your security mm. problem. And, and and the day before it went to court, um, he went guilty. Mm. So it, you know, and he was found guilty. So it was all lies that he mm. said. Mm. But but they did actually succeed in uh, ruining the whole popularity thing yeah. on the Dave Courtney thing. The books out, celebrity gangster, heir to the throne. Was that running all put, was that all put to bed after that? Like was that like uh, the yeah, profile, slowly, the slowly, slowly, gone down. Slowly, slowly but surely, yeah, yeah, hurt me. It did genuinely hurt me. How do you think, Dave? Your lifestyle has affected your family. Um, in some aspects, it's been beautiful because the last thing any of them really wanted to be was naughty. It might, might look at an attractive way of life to everyone that lived across the road, but they've actually seen daddy outside court waiting to get 20 years, sitting at the end of my bed with a bullet hole in me, police kicking the door down, you know, I've seen all that thing. So the last thing they wanted to be was a criminal, but my son, um, Oh, no, I'll come out in a minute. And and I always said to her like, like, like this, if I look frightened, then the kids would say she'd be frightened. And if she was frightened, the kids would be frightened. And she went to me, you know, tell me, should I be frightened or should I not? I'll, I'll judge it from you. And we had a beautiful little life. Yeah, she was never frightened. I was always coming home. Don't worry about that, baby. And I did always come home. Right? And, and then it was all all right. So we had a very tight, tight bonding enviable family. Mm. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. I like to think I was a good dad. I might have been a shit husband sometimes, but I was a good dad. Mm. And I have had uh, I had three kids from a previous wife, um, Bo, Chelsea and Levi. Bo is now 40, uh, Levi 30-something, and Chelsea who now lives in Australia 30-something. Um, I've had Courtney to Courtney with Jenny, um, and the little Lily, who's now 18, who's in the army, and Jensen, who was Jenny's child before I met her, and Drew. Uh, but I brought, I brought him up since he was eight months old. Jensen. Jensen. And um, I don't, I can't really put it down to me that turned him a bit naughty. I don't genuinely take any blame for that, right? I'm not trying to shirk the blame, but I don't put any blame onto me that what how he went like. He, had, he was a very testosterone-filled man. He also had leader material, and he got into a little world of naughtiness and was murdered. Um, he was shot eight years ago, which was the final blow, really, for me and Jennifer. We were living, we were still living together at the time. And because me and him had had a, um, a bit of an argument two weeks before, you know, which had resulted in me getting his car, both driving to the top of the road and went into the park to go and have a little straightener, mm. however strange that may be. To How some, old was he at the time? 22, 23. Um, price fighter, you know, you could punch the living granny out of his, his, his old dad, but. Yeah. You know, it got, got a bit verbal and um, we went up to the top of the, top of the green. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll think it was a bit, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a normal thing, but it was a quite normal thing for me and him. Not that we'd ever done that before, but it seemed normal at the time, right? It was one way to sort out this big arguing, screaming, slanging match that we was what having. What were you arguing about? I can't really, I can't even remember it. I can't, I, I can't. Was, Remember, it, was it a build up of things or was no, it just like a one off? No, no, it was a one off thing, right? I'm afraid I can't blame him for this. I don't want to go and make it sound anywhere. He was on the roids, yeah? That gives you a little bit, of a, bit more of a short, aggressive temper than normally. Yeah, and it had gone past anything I could do or say to talk about it. And we were having a, a very public stand up screaming match in front of people. And we ended up driving up to the top of the road. He bounced over a fence and was standing there like he's ready to have a fight with me. And I walked over to him and all and went, Jensen, you actually look like you want to fight me. Mm. 
And I've got one on the chin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's put me straight on my ass. Anyone who's been here on the you know, need to be knocked out. The, the thing to do is don't close your eyes, don't close yeah. your eyes, don't close your eyes. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Yeah. As soon as you close your eyes, you will knock out. Yeah. Just keep your eyes open and you'll get over that thing. Yeah. And where I couldn't actually spring up because I'm now a bit too old, I've actually gone like, you fucking cheeky little one. That's I've had to slowly put my hands down and actually get up. I've got another one. So I went, hold it, hold it. I said, we call that a draw. Huh? I said, we call that a draw. And he just went, ah, and shut off. And um, we actually sort of made up the day after, the day after, but because of that, two weeks later, he was shot. And Trident and, and people were going, well, that must have been Dave because, you know, I wouldn't allow someone to do that to me and get away with it. You understand what I mean? Mm. And I was actually at home with my missus watching telly when it happened. And we got a phone call saying, oh, Jensen's, Jensen's been shot. And we quickly went, oh, well, where is he? What hospital is he in? Where, where, where? And they went, no, 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 he's around his girlfriend's house and all that. So no one actually thought of it as anything, as a major, like, no one actually thought it was a, he you know, wasn't even in hospital, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he had actually been shot at point blank range, point blank range in the head outside his girlfriend's house. And um, so my missus went to go down and see him. Jenny. Jenny went yeah. down to go down and see him. Um, she got there and then he, you know, he'd been shot at point blank range and um, he died that night in the hospital. And that was the end of my life with Jenny, really, after that. You know, she was never the same. Uh, I was never the same. You know, because we'd had an argument before, I'd come under some suspicion that it might have had something to do with me. That whatever pressure they was under as, do you think your husband done something? To, you know, it was um, the worst time of my life. The most... Uh, changing part of my life it altered my whole life yeah seven weeks after that we split up what's your life been like post this since it's never been as it's altered it it's, it's, it's generally put a daily uh, life is habitual yeah life is habitual and the habit of getting up with wow you did if you've had it for a couple of years you start to start to swing that yeah, I've never wrote another book since. How do I so? How do I write another yeah. book and do a with happiness thing, and excitement? Uh, uh, yeah. Like you know, because my books are funny; they're yeah. not gangster. If you've ever wait, spent any time reading yeah. it, I'm meant to make you laugh. I won't go and get a load of me. Ain't I bad? I really ain't doing that, mate. Yeah, yeah. and that just um, I can't imagine what it's done to her to carry on living. Mm. I think if she hadn't had any other children, she wouldn't have wanted to live. Mm. To be quite honest. Mm. I mean, if you hadn't have had other children, she wouldn't have wanted to live. So that I can't imagine. So, but for, for me, it was a life-changing incident that, that, on a daily basis, is in my head. Yeah. What's your yeah. lifestyle like today? Because we're going into your mid-fifties here now, aren't we? So, what you're sixty-three now, 63, minus eight yeah. years, mid-fifties. What's it been like from fifty-five onwards? Have you completely slowed down? I, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that altered things for me. I have completely slowed down, but I'm afraid in, in reality, getting old does actually mellow you. I never ever thought I was going to be 64. Yeah. I never ever <laughs> planned for it. I, I never ever thought, I genuinely, genuinely, I didn't know how, for what was going to happen to me, I don't know. Yeah. But I didn't ever think I was going to be here mm. with arthritis and I've had some open heart surgery and uh, cancer and all that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought of all that. I didn't make any plans for that or prepare for that or pensions. Mm. Or I never thought I was going to get here. My way of life was at one time when I was buying one of my houses, right? when I was buying a place, they went to go and insure my life. And because of my life, they put me in the same bracket as under underwater pothole divers and astronauts what? and me that was As my in life risk. insurance yeah yeah and I was going fuck man what do you know that I don't know them because I'm just bobbing along yeah. nicely going out partying and, yeah. and I was in the same bracket as a fucking astronaut yeah yeah you know, yeah. <laughs> so, you know I drove past I 
played with guns. I hung around with the wrong people. I took drugs. I drunk. I everything that was wrong. Yeah, I was doing it. You understand what I mean? So. Actually thinking of what are you going to be like next year is when I'm 65. Yeah. I never genuinely thought yeah. that was going to happen. So right now it's most of hitting me, um, not hard, but it's, I mean, what, what you hear it a million times. As soon as you get older, the years go quicker. Yeah. It sounds like, like a bug roll, isn't it? It goes through and it spins off. Yeah. yeah At yeah. my age now, it just seems like the other day. Yeah. You know, is that so, because so, it was such a fast-paced life? I though? think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you was a really stunning, beautiful bird at yeah. uh, 18 to 35, 40, now you're 64, yeah. that's got to be worse yeah. than if you were just a normal bird. You yeah. understand what I mean? Yeah. And my life was so full. I never even had enough time. That's why I'm glad I wrote a lot of books, to actually tell you what I'd done yesterday. Because yeah. today was, was better. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you what I'd done today because the next day was even better. Yeah. You understand what I mean? And that's truly how I lived. And I can honestly say I've been in more countries, had more parties, let me pray of women, you know, than anyone I actually fucking know. If I was to drop down dead today, I can't moan one bit. Yeah. I'll bet you I'm smiling. Even if I hear someone behind me go, yeah. right, I'll smile. Because yeah. I'm, yeah, I've, I've, I've You've lived, lived more than, full life, yeah, haven't you? every single minute of every day. I even took things to stay awake. I didn't want to go to sleep in case I missed something. What's the future hold for Dave Courtney now? You're 63, 64 years old. I'm going to be a sex symbol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, re I really am. Um, Are you enjoying life? Oh, I'm very much enjoying yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, very much. Because I'm now thinking I'm, I'm actually living on, not living on borrowed time, but I never thought I'd be here. So every single day at the moment is, a fantastic for me yeah. you understand what i mean i'm yeah. like time i never thought i'd actually have it's like having an extra 20 minutes each yeah. way that i didn't think yeah i was gonna have you know yeah. what i mean getting here getting to be here was quite naughty do you feel, and that, quite do you feel that you're lucky to be here yeah yeah, yeah. jesus am i yeah jesus am i i've yeah. known the people that are a lot better and gooder men than me that are not yeah have you got any last words to say to jenny <sighs> um Apart from I will always love you, which he does already know. I don't know what strength that you need to get through what you're having to get through every day, my baby. Um, I love you very much. <laughs>